welcome to the Zooming Us podcast. I'm your host, Dustin Husky. And I'm Kurt Antarpus. As he's making all of the sounds, we were just Googling up liquor and wine and beer and whatnot, and uh, we've just learned something new just now. Can you find <laughs> what you just learned in this quick study? So I couldn't remember the rhyme, beer before wine, feeling fine, or wine before beer. You're in the clear. And now I've got a new one. <laughs> beer before wine, and you'll feel fine. Wine before beer, and you'll feel queer. Hmm. <laughs> no, but seriously, what, what was the study found? The study found is either way, you'll, you'll be... What is, what fucked up. Yes. You'll be fucked up regardless of the actual, like, order in how you drink stuff. Right, because alcohol is alcohol. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, I... For the longest time, I've, I've been doubting that. Uh, just because... I get shit-faced anyway, regardless of any order. And I don't... Yeah. Did you have... No, I okay. did. Go ahead. Um, I have never felt any different from beer before liquor, liquor before beer, and you know what? The result is the same. Yep. And I don't know why people that claim to be professional drinkers must have to say, Oh, yes, you obviously didn't do the right thing. Well, I don't know. It seems the right thing shows that... There's really no good order anyway. Yes. So, anyway, uh, my brother turned 21 for the first time. Yes, he did. On, uh, actually, yes, yesterday, really. Yeah, technically. March 1st. Wow, 21. Old long cat. Old long cat. So, happy birthday to him. Yep. And um, let's get on some subjects, because I have a few subjects that we can talk about. Happy birthday, Amica Pole. Amica Pole. You are now long. Well, you're still long. Anyway. Legally long. Well, le legally long. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> legally long. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. So everybody's got a routine in the morning. Mm -hmm. So now... My viewers out there know that I'm now a bus operator. Yeah. So I'm kind of stuck in my bus for 8 to 10 hours a day, which I have found out that I will have 10 hour long days. Uh, but it's a 4 on 3 off schedule, so you know what? I'm, I am perfectly fine with that. Currently, I am not out of a job, but I am out of a schedule until my license comes in. Until I can get that license, I cannot do the final eval until... So, technically, you've passed already, or you're just waiting for them to give you the I've, license? Actually, no. I've passed everything up to the license. I still need a license to pick up passengers. So you're... So you're... You're technically... I'm 80% of the way. You're technically authorized. You just need to be given the license. I need to be given the license to do the final eval, and then after 24 hours of driving, I'm good to go. That's great. Very happy for you. Um, so while I'm waiting for that, because things have slowed down with the pandemic, everyone's working remotely, so that licensing might come for four weeks. However, I sent my documents three weeks ago, and they were getting around to it a week or two ago. Mm -hmm. I can only hope, well, at least within a week or so, I will get my license. I have to call them to see, but otherwise my schedule is Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. So, if nothing comes tomorrow like it did today, I don't have to do shit for Thursday because that is my schedule. And if they can protect that schedule that I don't have to bid into it again, even better because uh, this is a good schedule anyway for and What me. are the hours again that you'd be working those days? Wednesday, no, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 to 11, a 90 minute layover or uh, a split of 90 minutes mm -hmm. then from one I believe that is that is 1 30 to 6 30 
Okay. And then Saturdays is 3.45 to 12.45 in the morning. So That's great, honestly. If I can keep that schedule forever, I'll be happy. Because you know what? Hell, that only means in the past, I only need to take off for Friday and Saturday. That's only two vacation days compared to three in the past. Yeah. Because I already have Sunday and Monday off, and I have half a Saturday going for me. And I have Thursday off. All I need is to take off uh, Friday and Saturday to do anything that I need to, let's say, for, for a con in the future. Right now, I don't get vacation time until next year. But since I'm laid off for a schedule that I can't do until my license comes in, I'm technically on vacation anyway, so that's great. Just not paid, but you not know paid. what? Yep. I'm going to take it while I can because you know what? The, next, the rest of the year, I'm going to be working every day. I don't even get personal days. I am literally working every day of the year. That's my scheduled day. Uh -huh. um, which, you know what? That's not changed for me because I never use any of my personal time from work anyway. So me neither. It doesn't matter to me anyway. So this uh, this was yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. Um, we all have our own little schedules and our things to do before we get to work. Mm -hmm. I wake up two hours before I have to go to work. Just in case if I need a shower, if I need to shower, feel freshen up a bit and whatnot, use the restroom before heading into work because it's nice to feel refreshed and ready to go just before work that you don't have to do anything for four to five hours right. until you need to do something or not at all. And um, we all know this is a very shitty podcast, but... You know, my bathroom habits aside, I don't tend to use the restroom while at work so much because I plan um, I, I plan my, my bathroom time before and after work. Just enough time that I don't have to use the bathroom, which means I can just focus on what I need to do. Okay. But for some reason, Monday morning... Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That was awful. Um... The need to shit was so powerful <laughs> that I actually couldn't believe that I actually needed to use the bathroom so bad. When I finally got to work, I decided to park my car in the parking lot like an ass. It was that bad that you go into your work's parking lot, you park like an ass just to get inside to use the restroom. And then you go outside and then you park your car all nice and whatnot and then you grab your phone, um, my lunchbox and whatnot and then I meet myself back inside. Um, once you're in a bus, that's almost practically impossible because uh, you you don't get bathroom breaks. Yep. And you made a mention that there should just be a hole down the driver's seat just to absolutely, um, was that, shit, evacuate. Shit while you drive. <laughs> oh my God, shit while you drive. It's just like, oh my God, that car is leaking. It's not what you think it is. So now I, I can't help but to think that my, my bus is a shit bus now. Yep. Oh, hey, uh, bus 777's got a hole in the middle, but that's okay because we put it there for a reason. Um, you just have it, you air out your ass <laughs> while you drive. You have a gust of wind just blowing on your ass. <laughs> yep. That sounds fantastic to me. Oh, my God. We're living in a shitty world on a shitty podcast in my shit bus. I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> and I had to get up and put my pants up. <laughs> okay, this is this is your stop and this is mine. <laughs> um, Don't you need to go to the bathroom? Oh, no, I already went. I already went just now. <laughs> oh, shit. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so, getting away from that, have you heard that the... So, you're familiar with, uh, two weeks ago, that Texas got hit by an incredibly big snowstorm for its size. And oh, yeah. Texas is a lot of things, but apparently when it comes to big snowstorms, it, it's a total bitch. Not so much it's people, well, it's people bitch because they, rea they, they realize, wow, how, how did the northerners, um survive this every winter and for us it's like it's a Tuesday for us um, but of course 
80% of all Texans only drive with summer tires instead of all seasons, which, number one, why? Why would you go as far as to only put summer tires on your car and not all seasons? Because I don't have winter tires or summer tires. I have all seasons, because you know what? I mean, they, they get rain. They get... they get rain, but apparently they don't actually use all season tires, which is just weird. That may change for them now. Oh, you know what? I would hope that a lot of those cars in the south, especially in Texas now, get fitted with not snow tires, but with all season tires. I would hope so, because you know what? All season tires are just better that, that way. Yep. Um, Texas Governor Greg Abbott announces um, he is ending statewide mask mandate during a pandemic of all times and is going to allow all businesses to open up at 100% capacity, but he expects Texans to make the best decision for themselves to keep up with CDC guidelines, which if you're going to tell people not to wear a mask and then letting businesses to be at full capacity, that goes against all CDC guidelines. Hmm. So literally, the, the, the thing at the end where he says, oh, but, uh, you know, we should still proceed with caution. Well, you just eliminating the mask mandate and encouraging businesses to fully open up, which I don't like the idea of failing businesses, especially small businesses that don't have a that that don't have a cushion to actually land on when, when the floor gets taken away from them. Um, it undoes all of the safekeeping that the CDC does for this country, as far as encouraging best practices to follow and undoing all of that and say oh uh, you should still be safe but we don't encourage you to wear a mask or business owners to make the right decisions um, Texas will be uh, big in one way and that will be cemeteries I, I don't know how this is a good thing for Texas uh, for for a state that, that prides itself in big numbers for anything, um, largest number of fat people in one state or, you know, number of trucks lifted in, uh, in Fort Worth or Austin suburbs where there's not a single mud pit in sight, um, number of 10-gallon hats on a baby, I don't know. Well... Texas has a personality that is as toxic as some Hollywood celebrities of who can do it better. Mm -hmm. This is not one of them that Texas should do. Um, this is one way to kill a lot of your constituents. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ninety-four percent of Texans didn't even get the vaccine yet, okay. and they're behind in, in in terms of rolling out their vaccine. Wisconsin has 15% of people who have taken the um, vaccine so far. And a good chunk of those were just single doses. Mm -hmm. Texas is lingering at around a 6% hmm. vaccination rate, and that's the lowest in the whole country. Um, they have mismanagement and failure of their energy and power grids that they're not winterized because they're on a different system. Not a system, but a different grid network compared to the federal east or, or west grids. Um, <laughs> Ted Cruz going to Cancun when everyone else in Texas is freezing without power, water, or um, supplies. Um, you know what? I, I said this once before. Mm -hmm. Politics or politicians should get tarred and pubed, almost like deer season. Yeah. The American people need the politician deer season of grab a politician, yank as many pubes from your nether regions, get as much aircraft quality glue or gorilla glue, put it on their face. Put pubes on, on, on their face so that it'll take months for that to go away. Should be their own pubes, though. What happens if some of them are shaved? They're not shaved. True, true. Um, 
But yeah, just tar and pube as many politicians, because you know what? They don't care. Um, they're, they're living in a whole world of, of their own, but they think, oh, um, mask mandate. We, we don't need that anymore. You know why they did that? This is just a thought. This is my own. What's, what's your thought? I feel like they're just doing it to create a conflict. Uh, conflict in terms of between people talking about it, not just talking about it, doing it, and doing it. Yeah. So we have more people coming in Walmart not wearing a mask now because of this, and the people that believe in this are mad at the people that don't wear masks. Yeah. That's the conflict I'm looking at. I'm looking at it from a very anti view. The us, the small people, the ones that really affects. Pretty much you're looking at it as poking poking the sleeping bear with a stick. Yeah. Get people riled up again. Just I mean because, that's certainly gonna that's certainly working because we're talking about it. Yeah, I mean just because Trump isn't in office doesn't mean you can't still get people riled up. Americans are the most riled up people on the planet. Yep. Uh, baby Jesus likes Nike shoes instead of Re Reebok, and then all of a sudden, people are already up in arms about it. Yep. Uh, you know what? I can see more of that than anything else. Yeah. It is kind of pathetic. It's almost like we're bored because Trump is out of office, so... That's a, well, I don't know about being bored is a good thing, but trumping office is a good thing. Yeah, out of office. Um, he, he was no help to any one of us. Even to his constituents, unless you are a wealthy person, he don't care about you. No. Um, and I'm starting to think about that about Democrats as well. I, I just think the whole political system is just kind of... Messed not, up. It, they're not for us as much as we'd like to think they are. They're not. Um... Even you can see Bernie Sanders, but I'd say out of all of them, Bernie Sanders is the only person in politics that actually probably gives a shit about. The only problem with Bernie that I really had a problem with this time around was he asked for a lot of money. Most of the time I saw videos from him. It was him asking for donations. Yeah. You don't need him. He's very well off. Whether it was for his campaign or not, I think just getting money out of politics is impossible right now, but it needs to happen. No. These people that run for office Do are it. already very well off to begin with. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't have ran. Um, speaking of wealthy people running for positions that they probably should have no business being in, so... I was watching some videos online about the USPS and about a guy by the name of what George George LaJoy or something like that or Le Pen I forget his exact name um, but apparently remember last year when people were at war with the U.S. Postal Service because, oh, mail-in ballots. Well, that aside, let's just go with the idea that people were up in arms and putting up shields to protect the USPS and, well, picking up arms to attack it or possibly even destroy it. Yeah. Um, USPS is a government entity. It is an agency. It's the only affect means of having mail being delivered honestly without it being um, dug through by sensors or tampered. whatnot tampered with your your checks aren't suddenly missing in in the mail so you know you you can get paid and whatnot the USPS is a very very important agency in government because without it not a single American will get their paychecks if they're still getting it through the mail? Most are. Um, most at this point, you're getting it through bank deposits, which yeah. is really the way to go. Which is really a wonder why the U.S. 
<clears throat> postal service is even a, a thing anymore. I'm glad that it still exists because if it was up to FedEx and UPS, we won't get shit from them. Huh. USPS is the only thing keeping them honest. But going back to what I was talking, the Postmaster General was this guy directed, or, um, Trump practically gave a loser a job. One of his supporters to become the Postmaster General, he was grilled about the inner workings and the usages of, you know, the USPS, postal mail, how much stamps are worth, uh, what type of stamp you should use for different parcels and, and whatnot, and he had no idea. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, before he ended up getting the job, he had nothing to do with USPS. It's just Trump needed a strong man to slow the process down so that he could win an election by slowing down the mail, which is legal. Uh, that is a federal, uh, that is a federal crime right there is to slow down the mail. Yeah. It's one thing if it's delayed by natural causes or huge volume, but if you're going to be purposely slowing down the mail, which may potentially have someone's life-giving medicine, you are literally doing a felony that you should probably just be thrown in jail just because you really shouldn't be fucking around with people's mail, regardless of what it is. Yep. USP, uh, no, UPS and FedEx if there was no USPS, they would run this country to the ground in terms of mail. A lot of the shit that we'd send around won't get to anywhere in months. Where it should take just days or weeks. Again, USPS is the only thing that keeps all the other private companies in honest. In, well, pure honesty check. Um, I just find it amazing that you're going to appoint someone. Well, I'm not surprised. You're going to appoint someone who has no clue how the government agency works and then expect them to make it function when they really don't have a clue. They're just there to collect a paycheck. Didn't he employ someone else for uh, school board? Didn't oh, yeah. Bets, Betsy, Betsy DeVos, who's actually never worked in education. Yeah. And, yeah, and that didn't turn out so well. And she actually stepped down. She, she knew that she wasn't going to make it. Um, in the Biden years, so she left. Putting people in, in power that have no idea how to actually run their agencies is a sign of nepotism of the max. He's, that's his legacy. Oh yeah, it's just putting useless people in power that probably shouldn't be in power. And people that were in power, pulling them out. Yeah, and actually having a clue what's going on. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I hope he gets a heart attack before 2024. He, he should not deserve to run again, if we're up to me. Um, I'd rather have my boss get a heart attack. In, in fact, reserve two heart attacks for my old boss and Trump, but that'll never happen yet. They both like eating red meat a lot, so who, who knows? Mm. Their, their heart will, will grow three, tar, uh, three sizes and um, an enlarged heart is not really a good thing. Nope. Works three times as hard. Yeah. I mean, apparently from... Uh, so, um, me, and a, uh, me and my co-worker, the, the, the Torpedo at, at Marsh, decided to hang out yes, yesterday for a while just to catch up in the last two weeks of since I've been gone. And apparently, at the Culver's we went to, we had bumped into another former Marsh employee there who worked in the office. He doesn't work there anymore? Oh, either? no. Well, he's, well, he still works there. It's just a former, I, sh I should say a former co-worker gotcha. who actually still works there. And he asked me, when was my last day? And I said, oh, um, I, I quit two weeks ago. Totally didn't know that I was actually gone. <laughs> wow. That's pretty bad. Um, my, the company at, at times will announce when someone is leaving. Yeah. Well, when I left, there was no honor given to me about me leaving. It's incredibly biased. 
Um, but since I've, I've held the strings for so long that you would think, hey, give me something, but I Even kind of expected you, Didn't that. you have like two exit interviews? Um, I thought she called you back for another one. Only one. And I will refuse to go back to that company knowing that I have to do another one. Right. Um, apparently, my boss is huffing and puffing around. So, he's even more out of weight. Uh, apparently, my boss gained a ton of weight. Good. I don't know how, but in two weeks, he weighs much more than he normally does. And he is out of breath sitting. That's a bad sign. Oh, yeah. I think my boss's heart will explode. And I hope it does. For a man that, who hates his wife and his daughter, uh, just doesn't deserve to live. But apparently, the first week since I've been gone, he's like, oh, I wish I had him here. Oh, I, I wish he could uh, be here to do this. It's like, uh, yeah, no, there's a reason why I left. Um, and after the second, or after the first week, he totally forgot that I was even there. Which I kind of expected out of him anyway. Yeah. Um, and you know what? Two weeks in, in, in my new job, I do not miss the talk of politics every day. Since I'm in a union, and everyone here is African American... I doubt there's a single person at my company is for Trump. Yeah, I doubt that too. Which is fantastic, because you know what? I'm so glad not to hear politics every, every single damn day. Yep. I like that. Um, and my friend that I was with yesterday, he has an interview this Saturday um, for Home Depot down the street as a... Um, shipping and receiving making four to six dollars more an hour than what he's making there. So what is he going to be at? Like 17, 18 an hour? Yes. That's pretty good. That is very good. And I hope he gets it because he, he deserves better too. And that will effectively be the last person who is young and has you know, had the company on their shoulders thinking the company's thinking, oh, yeah, all these young people are, are going to carry the company into the future. No, there's not a single young person in the company that's staying there long enough to do it. Um, well, they see, they see uh, a badly run company. Oh, yeah. There's even someone from a different department. Um, once I told them that, that I was leaving, now it's gotten them thinking about leaving as well. So someone in wire department is going to be going pretty soon. Um, and once Torpedo leaves, there's one guy in my department, or in the old department, that plans on leaving when he leaves, hmm. because the only joy he has left is talking to, to my friend, the Torpedo. And when he, he said that when he's gone, he's planning on leaving out as well, because there's no other good thing to come to work besides talking to one guy. Um, and everyone else he just can't stand. Right. Which at that point, if you're down to one person, I'm sorry, but you need to probably find something better. Because anything can happen to that one person that, that you'd rather see at work. Yep. Um, you, you need to do something better. So yeah, my dumpster fire is still ongoing. And with Torpedo leaving and maybe a few others too, you know what? Even bigger dumpster fire. And this company kind of deserved it. They kind of do. So that that was that was pretty fun. And we cruised around for a bit too. I I kind of missed driving around a bit, and I think the car was pretty happy just getting driven quite a lot. So it was kind of nice. So at my work, <clears throat> my favorite person I work with, Lauren, is thinking about transferring to my old store. In Delafield. In Delafield, because it's closer to her house. Really? And she'll make more money there. You know what? I'm, I'm glad for her. 
Unfortunately, that will bring us down to two people left in the department for produce. And no one else has gone in it. We've gone from seven people down to three. So, so oh, wait, so hold on. One, two, three. Yeah, from seven people down to three. So we always had some coverage. There was always at least three people in, in the department working. Now we're lucky to have two most days. Three on two, the, two days. The rest is always switched out. So we never have... Your, your, um, your location is close to the collapse in that regard. Yeah. Hey, you know, if you pay people lots of money, they'll stay at any company. Yeah. That's the whole shebang about everything going on with $15 an hour. You, you pay people a living wage, they won't have a need to look around for another job, right? Because if they get all their needs met to a job, your, is your tooth okay? Mm. There's not a tooth. Ah. Is it in your mouth? Mm -hmm. Your gum line? Yeah, gum line. Ah, the poos should agitate his gums. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty agitated right now. To the point that they sting that bad. More like hurt because I shoot a chip. Oh, and the chip went in the gum line. Yeah. Oh, that's what happened. Oh, okay. Well, the, okay. Well, that that makes more sense. Yeah, I hate that. That's because there should be a molar there. But the poos got into a bar fight, and, and he swatted. No more molar. And then he lost a tooth because he was fighting other tomcats. Yeah. And he will not tell who won. Because Take care of your teeth, people. Everybody zoomed away. Because you only get one set, and then... That's it. You're done. Yeah, your, your teeth are pretty important. Make sure that you brush them regularly. You floss once in a while. Some uh, mouthwash, and you know what? Hey, you... If you take care of your, your teeth, it, your teeth will certainly take care of how you eat, so. Take it from me and my mom, who has no teeth. Well, you have teeth. Your mom doesn't have any teeth. No. Um, just in case someone were to be confused by that, because Poos has things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, teeth are good. You just do... Just brush for a few minutes and floss for a few more, and your teeth will certainly thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I want to get into a big subject. Okay. So with with how the world is going in a like hell in a handbasket, mm -hmm. I want to buy. I I wish I had enough money. A fursuit. No, actually it goes beyond that. In, in fact, it may even in, include that too. If I had enough money, I would buy a county out of any state. Just a, a county and just make it its own little gay republic. I want to create a gay society. Okay. I'm and down. This, this is LGBTQ+. Um, we want to make it thriving. We, we want all forms of industry, so manufacturing, whatnot, this and that. It's, it's going to cater to all walks of life to do whatever they wish to do and more. So, in this case, in this new republic... Um, 
things are going to be totally different compared to other republics and countries and, and, and whatnot. How so? Just because that we are in a gay society, mm -hmm. things are going to be fun and gay. Sex in the streets? Yes, there will be... So, you know how there's handicap parking and then ordinary parking, and then just, in, like, in some sections of the parking lot is, like, fucking space. So people are like, hey, you want to bang? Sure! And then they go right at it in the parking lot of a pick and save or something. You don't need designated areas for people to fuck. Oh. <laughs> if people want to fuck, they'll fuck anywhere. <laughs> they're going to fuck on the cars. They're, they're going to fuck on the... On the um... gay police, hey, hey, make sure you're fucking in only the fucking designated areas. No, hey, 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 I want to get some on on this action. And then they, uh, and, and then and then the gay police. So then the gay police, um, you know those 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 glitter clothing. Mm -hmm. So actual policemen wearing nothing but skimpy gear. But they will actually do their job. Mm -hmm. But also, too, it's like, hey, you see that butthole? I'm going to put a parking ticket in it. <laughs> and all the policemen will, re will re be required to have really nice bodies. And a mustache. I don't know for what reason. I don't know. Handlebar mustache? Any kind of mustache. Any kind of mustache. Or beard. I don't know. Um, a newscaster mustache. A newscaster mustache. Um, construction workers are going to be leather daddies. Um, literally, their whole leather gear is their tool belt. So then you get your hammer, you get your ruler, uh, you get a Lavelle. Or level if you're that thick, um, and probably handcuffs. And then the uh, gay police are going to be. Oh, you got those two? Oh yeah, but ours are leather lined. Or else the uh, gay police handcuffs are like the fuzzy ones, with maybe a little bit of barbed wire somewhere in there, because sometimes people are into that. Um. What what kind of attractions do we have? What do you mean? An entertainment. Porn. I mean, we could go with that. I mean, what, what, where are you going with this? Oh, I was just thinking of like things to do in this, in. Uh, oh, like extracurricular. Or something like that. I mean, very much the same as the rest of the world, really. So then we have a zoo, and then then we have the dolphin area. But when you go in, that Day water dolphins. is not clear. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's the water sports arena. Oh no! But all the people there are gonna be like, oh yeah, oh god. And all the dolphins are like, oh, this is this is really nasty, but there's that one dolphin's like, oh, no, no, this is not bad. Oh, God. That <laughs> is so bad. Oh, why did I think of that? I don't know. Um, let's see. So for schools... I don't know. Like, what do you think a gay school should be like? Uh, well, you're delving into age group. Because this is the gay society. I would say that they should... To, to keep it simple without getting into specifics, all boy, all girl, and other... Yes, I w that's actually fantastic. I was thinking of, of, of that. Yeah. Um, You're welcome, everyone. 
I was also thinking just history of the world and world gay history. Yeah. Of all kinds. Oh, as far as courses that are offered. Yeah. Oh, of course. Um, may as well go into all things. So there is, you know, hey, you want to take a semester in, uh, actually, no, no, that could be college. Water sports. Oh, God. Oh, no, I was just no, thinking of keeping sorry. it simple. Sorry. I was thinking of keeping it simple. I was thinking college is, is when you start learning all the kinky sexual stuff. Um, intro to Drake Queen. Sure. That's the government. The government is just nothing but drag queens. Oh well, yeah, obviously. And they uh, they would rather be uh, uh, be referred to as bitch resentative. No, I'm thinking too hard. Just yep. bitches. I don't know. <laughs> um. It would either be uh, Patrick Stewart or Elton John would have to be the president. Is Patrick Stewart gay, though? The guy from uh, Star, Star Trek? Trek? Yeah. yeah. I didn't think he was. I thought he was just an ally. He is. Patrick Stewart? He's gay with uh, Gandalf. No. Yeah. I don't think so. That's the last time I heard about it. Really? I thought he yeah. was straight. No, far from it. Far from it. Um, the the actor which escapes my mind, uh, um, Gandalf, very gay. Yeah, I know he is. And I believe he is, in fact, in a, in a relationship with uh, Patrick Stewart. I have to check this now. Is Patrick Stewart gay? If anything... I would want Elton John to make um, the national anthem. And that man has a very sexy voice. I would entrust him to make a song about this glorious country. What it will be, I really don't know. I think it'd be funny if it just were to change every single time he he plays. You know what? It's probably just just the theme of of like just the um, voice is being distracted. Well, here's the thing. Yes. Ian McKellen is the guy you're talking about. Who played... Yes. Yeah, he's he's gay. Yes. Uh, Stewart. Is married to Sonny uh, Ozo, uh, a singer-songwriter based out of Brooklyn. Wait a minute, am I thinking of the right person? No. Is that Sonny Ozo, Lady Stewart? She is married to the British act actor Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart is not gay. Patrick Stewart is an ally. Oh. He's, definitely He's best friends with. Ian McKellen. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, but I mean, like, anytime anything ever comes up that's LGBTQ, LB, LGB, the L thing, Patrick Stewart is like first in line to support, support. because he's a beloved actor within the community so much. We'll make him ambassador. Make him ambassador for sure. Yes. Doesn't have to be gay. See, that's no. the thing. And this is why I want it to be an inclusive thing. Uh, you don't have to be gay. You can be an ally. You can be whatever, adjacent, and be a part of this uh, county. Of the society. All right, so then actually we can make citizens of allies and whatnot say, hey, if you love us, come join us. Yeah. Um, and I guarantee we, people there, will. There, there will be, because you know what? There will be low crime. There would be low crime in this this country because you know what people work. Yeah. People, they just don't work. They work in clubs. Yeah. Um. There is Ooh. no crime. Uh, from within the county because, uh, the police during the day, they do their civic duties. 
the police at night, um, you know what? They're just reduced to just uh, sexy utility thongs. I can deal with that. Um, if you're caught with, if you're caught stealing in, uh, um, in this place, I think you're probably going to, um, I think the police are going to have a really, really good time, and it's not going to be their nightsticks. No. It, 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 it will be their, uh, their law enforcement penises. Well, you're inviting, like, people may want that. So you can't give them what they want. They might just give them that anyway. I would say... I'm going to gonna steal myself a gumball. Oh, yes, the force is here. If you're caught stealing, you get expedited. You get ostracized and removed from the community. Or we can just do medieval, put them in the stocks and just kind of have like the whole... like Cut off their dick. No, no, I was just thinking, here's this bear butt. Now totally massage the insides with phalluses. Third world countries treat theft. Thieves with, with death. Not just death. It starts off with a very clear-cut image of what this person did. They cut off fingers. So if you see so somebody... In this, so in this country, do, do we just circumcise people? If you see somebody missing a finger... You know they did something wrong. It is a... So she was just circumcised people? No, no. <laughs> I, I'm, I guess I'm being way too serious about this. I, I want a very visual uh, sign that this person has done wrong. I do. I, <laughs> oh I my feel, God. Very, very vengeful poos. I, I do. I, I believe that so then Curdan's going to be at, like, the I'd Justice I'd be missing Department. a finger right now. Aww. But I would, I guarantee I wouldn't lose another one. You would be a three-toed poos. I'd be a cartoon cat. Aww. Yep. That's gone too real. It is I think real. I'm just going to make you the, like, head of, like, the head of justice, and no one will fear anyone but a cat on a pedestal with a gavel absolutely firmly loafing oh yeah um let's see what is our currency the gay dollar okay it's got to be glitter it doesn't have to all be glitter but I would say that probably the most Iconic gay people in history would be on each... Uh, on each dollar. On each... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Increment. Who would be the $100 hoe? Elton John. Elton John, there we go. And you know what? He'd be fine with that. Oh, I'm sure he would. And you know what? It would be like a holographic... Uh, hunt hundred dollar bill so when you turn the dollar or when you turn the hundred dollar bill over it's it's him with a different outfit and shades yep. and when you look at it in a different light it's something different too yep. but it's Elton John um, I would recommend the fifty dollar hoe to be RuPaul yeah okay. so then there's that we got twenty dollars. Hmm. Who would be the twenty dollar hoe? Magneto. Magneto. I like that. Okay, I like that. I like that. Um, so there's so there's twenties, then there's tens. Who would be on the ten dollar bill? Alexander the Great. Okay. All right. Okay. Um. I don't know, but for some reason, I'd I'd still picture Ab Abraham Lincoln as the five dollar hoe because he is a good dude. Um, 
many people in history. I definitely know what to do with the one dollar hoe. It's just going to be a mirror. So every single time you look at that dollar, it's you in the little oval. It's like, oh my god, it's me! Oh, I'm a one dollar hoe. <laughs> So, so, so that's our currency. Um, what is, what is the great seal of this country? What is, what is our symbol of what we all represent? Do you know Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci was gay? Really? Yeah. Supposedly. So we'll put him on the five dollar hoe then. Michelangelo. God, we start. We need to start making more and more money now. Well, dead people should be on there. Shouldn't be living people, so we can replace RuPaul and uh, Elton John. Elton John. Har Harvey Milk. Yep, from uh, from from the uh, Watergate. Yep. Yeah. Let's see. Um. So again, what is what is the symbol of this country? We could say the gay pride flag. I mean, it is universal, yeah. but everyone around the world can use it as well. Otherwise, we can say it's the gay pride flag, and we've just actually taken over the whole world, but no one else wants to ad admit that it is. Um. <clears throat> It could just be a dove with gay pride colors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it could be that. It could be that. So then at uh, stadiums around the world, when we go to the Olympics, it's literally just, you know, doves in tie-dye just flying in, in the air. And it's like, oh, look at that. Oh. And then when they poop, it's just all rainbow colored too. Like, oh, that is so weird. Why? But that is also strange. So we are our own country, or are we just a county? Uh, apparently, country, county, republic, whatever. We are our own people. Um, as what Xander the Blue had told us, um, the world wants to put gays on an island anyway. Let's have a fun what-if situation that we end up getting our own land and say, Oh! We are founded. It, like, so then around the, the, the territory, it would just be like a... It would be a wooden fence with like... Um, with like club posters of, Oh, see Marty XXX tonight at such and such. See his tower of meat. That is to scare other people away from not wanting to come in. Unless, hey, we like visitors. And then, of course, the guards will just have, like, long lance dildos that probably shoot glitter. In the name of gay. And just, pfft. What is the puss doing? Yeah. More important figures in gay history. Ooh. What did you find? The uh, Wachowski sisters. I don't even know who they are. The ones that created the Matrix movie series. Really? A.K.A. the Wachowski brothers. Hmm. I did not know that. They have both had sex changes. Really? Yes. So now they're sisters now. Ellen DeGeneres, obviously. Oh, yes. She was going through some... Anderson work. Cooper. Anderson Cooper. He will be the country's... Uh, um, Primetime... Uh, TV news anchor. That would be fun. Definitely. Um, I'm trying to think 
think what else. I can't think. I'm drunk. Ah, uh, cat's drunk. Buzzed puss. Wine before beer. Made you queer. Made me even more queer. Ah. Let's see. Um, How are you feeling? I'm feeling all right so far. So, oh my God. <laughs> okay, so with all countries, they have visitors. They have tourism. We have a tourist industry. Uh, in their hotel rooms, they have a, a, a sorted assortments of um, dildos. Which you would think, hey, we don't need this. We're going to put these away. Or secretly burn them in the bathtub. We don't know. But every single place they look, under the covers, dicks. Com on TV. Complimentary bad dragon toys with, for every person that checks in the hotel. You know people would be definitely be visiting us because those are worth quite a fortune. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh my god, this hotel is so good, and Duke the Dragon... Look in your shower. Oh my god, it's more dicks. Look in this drawer. Oh, it's Electro Stim. A what? Electro Stim. Who's that? Electro Stimulation. Oh. You put this directly over the nipple. Ooh. Um. It's funny you mentioned that. I've been running into a lot of Spidey accounts on Twitter uh -huh. that use vibrators on their penises. Then go on. And then they shoot cum through their Spidey suits. Interesting. It almost like I just poured Sprite. Yep. This episode is sponsored by White Claw Hard Seltzer Mango. It's been a while since I've had a White Claw. I, I bought some lately. It's like, you know what? It's been a long while since I've had seltzer. And I actually got more of them if, if you want. You want one? Uh, I'll try one. Okay. Are they all mango? Uh, they're all different kinds, except for lime, because lime sucked. Mm, yeah. I have mango, lemon, watermelon, or tangerine. No, lemon. Lemon, okay. Thank you. Woo! Oh. Oh, so lately in the world of Wisconsin, this past winter, we had gotten quite a bit of snow. And you know what's actually kind of uh, fun? Is that uh, the snow is melting away. Yep. It's actually kind of nice. It's actually made driving around here a lot more safer. Because you can see over the median, you, you can see over islands, you can see around corners so well, it is kind of nice. Um, they should have they have, should have done something with the snow a long time ago, but hey. Your neighbor. Yeah, she didn't shovel her driveway the last time it snowed, and for the next two weeks didn't bother doing anything with it. Um, she claims it, that her phone has broken down, but she could have come over to us and asked to arrange an appointment with her snow shoveler to just come over to do her driveway. She didn't have anybody to do her driveway this year. She oh, didn't no, have she any, didn't. She didn't, have, she didn't even have anybody. Well, they did it one time. Once or I, twice. Because you see the, uh, the plow trail that he made into her lawn. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was pretty lovely. Uh, last year, she didn't have anybody. As far as I knew, yeah. Because I did her driveway once. And she looked out the window like, who the hell is this crazy person? Then I knocked on her door to let her know that I did it and that I moved her garbage cans up. 
She never answered her door. No. She is a strange in, in, individual, Anna. Yep. Um, Shout out to Anna if you're listening to this. Oh, God. Doubtful. Doubtful, but that'd be funny. Um, oh, we have... a shout out for me. Oh, oh I'm an old lady. Um, for many years, we used to do her driveway. Um, for a time when we could still do it, when we had the time, and we didn't really have to hurt for money so much because we it paid out of our own pocket. But if anyone's been to the house of Husk, we ha we share a mutual driveway. It's in the shape of a U that's got little... Um, Penises hanging from both sides of the U. Yeah, let's actually say that. Um, so... She enters her, her driveway on her end, and when she backs out, she makes a left into our driveway and then goes out. We go in our side, and then when we back out, we go out le uh, right side on her side. It's actually kind of convenient. It's actually kind of nice. It makes getting around so much easier. You don't have to back out into the street. Which, Cleveland Avenue is... It sucks. It's a busy street. It's a busy street. And and to think that they were almost considering making it a four-lane road at one point. Imagine the kind of hell. It's bad enough as it is. It would yeah. be much worse. And they say, well, New Berlin's growing at the speed of light. Well, hey, if you make the roads wider, you're only going to encourage more people to drive. They made a study. If you keep widening highways, more and more people are encouraged to own cars. Yeah. It's not to say that you can't live without a car or could live with a car. But when you live in the city, you don't need a car. Because at that point, you, you have the bus, you have transportation, you've got bicycles. I would say motorcycles are more safer oh. in the city than they are out in the suburbs because people don't trust or respect them. In the city, you're on top of everybody. You need to respect each other. Um, but, um, yeah. But going back to Anna, for the longest time we did a driveway. Then, after doing it for so long and never getting paid for it, we stopped. Because... Well, it's hard enough to do something if you're not getting paid for it, and eventually you just kind of give up because you're uh, it's coming out of your own money. Then she would ask a few times to do it, and then she'd say she'd pay, and then okay, that was all right, but then she got a little kooky on the payments. Um, and let, let's be honest and clear about this, too. Uh, you guys weren't gouging her. We we never did. And she is very well off. Oh, she is. But she is so penny pinching. Yeah. Uh, one summer when I was somewhat unemployed, um, I asked Anna if I could work for her in the summer to do some of her yard work, which she's old. And she's not keeping up with her yard, but I figure, hey, I can help her out. She can help me, I can help her. I can help clean up her yard, and I can get paid. Um, I was hoping for maybe like 60 bucks a month or so, or even more than that. Um, How much a month? To do a few hours a day or something like that. And you said, what? How much again? I'm sorry. I was hoping for 60 bucks or, or, or more a month. That's not much money. She gave me money, and then I asked for more, and she says, no, 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 I, I, I gave you your, your money. Oh, for, what, the last few weeks? No, for the whole summer. So she was hoping that 60 bucks for the whole summer would get me to keep working for her. Wow. And I decided to stop helping because it's like, no, I am not breaking my back for 60 bucks for one summer. Does she realize most people make $60 in a day? Yeah. Oh, she is She is totally a penny pincher. At the very least, $60 a day. 
Sixty-eight dollars is seven twenty-five an hour. I make so. I make eighty dollars a day. No. No. You're making about ninety dollars. No, I'm making about a hundred dollars a day. No. Anyway, uh, it's definitely she, more than that. She is such a penny pincher that she thought that she can get a buy with my work for the whole summer on only sixty bucks. I'm not asking for a whole lot. I just want a little bit of money to go along the side. You know, when you're a college student and you make whatever money you can, and any money on the side, you do what you can, right? Yeah. And I thought, hey, it's only next door. I can help her with what I can. That's fantastic. No, um... She paid me $30 one time, and then she paid me $30 another time, and then she never paid me again. I say, hey, Anna, um, when, when do I get paid next? And like, oh, uh, that's it. And like, that's it for what, the the week, the month? And like, oh, no, no, for the whole year. It's like, you still want me to work, but you expect me to do it on 60 bucks. They didn't even pay for the gas. Not just gas, just for any bit of effort put into anything. I mean, you consider I filled... My dad's lawnmower, probably twice, sometimes three times in the summer. And that was like... Hmm. I don't know, how big is a, a gas tank in a, in a regular standard size lawnmower? A, a, a riding one or a push one? A push. Probably half a gallon. Which is probably... What? What would you think? How much? Say say it like maybe three dollars an hour, three dollars a gallon, perhaps or something like that. So you're looking at maybe a dollar fifty, maybe two dollars. I don't know. Either way, it's not worth the money. No. Working that little. Yeah. Or that hard for that little. Oh, money. and she and she wanted me to work long in the day. I'd be like, I'd be a half an hour and then buy. Yeah. If After a while, I, I stopped working, and then uh, she she came over, and then telling my mom, and said, I think I may have pissed him off. And, like, and then mom's like, well, what did you do? And like, oh, I just paid him this much. I'm like, oh, well, I will talk to him. And then I told mom, and then she was like, oh, so that's why you stopped working for yeah. her. Um, then she decided to want to help Anna out. And then she got burned the same way, except she only got $55. <clears throat> Then after that, it's like, I'm not helping you because you don't pay enough money yeah. for the amount of work that you want me to do. Especially somebody who's really well off. She owns, owns two homes. Yeah. And has an inheritance from her husband who was a professor. Wasn't he a professor of some sort? Yeah, he was. I forget what, what kind of professor, but... I think it was a professor at uh, UW Madison or Milwaukee. Professor of history. Yeah. And they uh, they were both professors. They're, they were both well off. George George was Ukrainian no nobility back in in the time of the Tsar. That's right. Uh, her husband George was born in. Uh, I believe in 1903 and survived. World War One on the Russian side, as, as, as far as a boy, survived the Russian Revolution, survived persecution, moved to Poland because it was the only safe place to be. Right. Then in World War Two, he was in slave labor camp by the Germans, which is where he met his wife Anna in, at a slave labor factory in uh, Czechoslovakia. They fell in love, and then after the war, they were liberated. Stayed in Poland until, I think, 1950, and then they were kind of told to, like, hey, um, you either get imprisonment or you get exiled. Mm -hmm. So they both left for America. They were both given a chance, which is kind of rare. Yeah. But you know what? Hey, um, that's, that's, that's less mouths to feed by the uh, Polish Communist Authority. So they gave them the option to get, to, to get them out. Um, and they moved here. 
I just don't understand why Anna is just such a cheapskate. She's a selfish person. Oh, she is. Much like much like her sons. Yeah. Um, it's no wonder they are the way they are because oh, yeah. she is the way she is. Yeah. One of her sons in St. Louis is a brain surgeon. Wow. His piece of shit car broke down. He calls mommy up for money to pay for the car. <laughs> then he says that he was going to buy a kayak for 500 bucks. And he wants 500 bucks from his mom. This story is about like two, three year, years old, so this is nothing like recent. old. This is pretty. This is pretty recent if you think about it. Right. And um, no, she says no. I, I, I can't do that. I, I would help fix her car, but I'm not going to let you buy something that's not your car. Hmm. Um. Her her dipshit son. The other dipshit son wanted to get away from his wife and his invalid child, who's in his 40s, uh, with Down syndrome. Mm. He hates his son and hates his wife and wanted to move back up to mom, good old Anna, to get away, contemplating divorce because he wanted less to do in life. Uh, until... He came back, suddenly realizing he he loves his wife, which that that family is fucked up. Yeah. Um, decided to convince his mom during his stay to buy him a new car. Told him no, but she will buy him a good used car of his choosing, which mm-hmm. was a Lincoln MKZ or MKX or something. Okay. So it's like a six-year-old luxury car. Put it in her name, but when he flew back to Florida, this is the third time this has happened too. So mind you, this is not the first time this has happened. He flew back to Florida with the key after his mom told him, after Anna told him, if you're going to go back to Florida, I want you to keep the key here. Okay. Okay. When he flew back to Florida, he knew to take the key with him. And the car only came with one key. <laughs> and the car stood in, stood in place for about eight months. Wow. You, you've actually been here when that's happened. So yeah. that, that, that one red car in her driveway that didn't move, yep. that was his. Technically, it was hers, but he took the key. So she had to pay a couple hundred dollars to get a, a new key program so that she can uh, whisk the car away, but the car didn't start, and the car didn't break. So she had to get a tow truck. Hmm. She ended up getting some of her money back from, from the car, uh, but she did lose money on it. The last time, actually the first two times, um... It happened twice before then, and when we moved in, there was an old Subaru wagon that had been parked there since the 90s, well, actually, since the 80s, when it was a brand new car, and it wasn't removed until, like, 2000 or something like that, and uh, I would kick the rust out of it, because I was bored, and thought, hey, look at that, I can kick this car, while no one else is watching, kick yeah, it was a piece of junk. And when they removed the car, the wheels had actually made an imprint on the cement. Hmm. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It stood there long enough to do that. So my supervisor, who I haven't been speaking to for the last... Sabine? Two and a half months, Sabine, Sardine, uh, gave me a present today. Oh, yeah? She's a little crafty thing. Like, she likes to make crafts and stuff. She'll buy something from, like, one of those craft stores, and then she'll embellish on it. She'll add little little stuff here and there. So 
So she doesn't actually make it from scratch or anything. It's it's all just like kind of mishmash together. She gave me this little thing that says family. She put a cross on it and something else. Well, that's nice of her. It was nice of her. I left it at work by accident. Forgot it. It could have been thrown out by now. Knowing knowing Walmart. Yeah. Um, knowing how employees don't care about anyone's things, I'm sure. Yeah. It'd be amazing if it'll be there by Thursday. I'll, I'll be shocked. And if it is still there, great. If it isn't, oh well, too. Uh, I don't know that I was going to keep it anyway. Just because I still am not uh, happy with her. I feel like this is her way of apologizing which I, without saying uh, the words, I'm sorry. She did say I'm sorry, but it was more of an I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, so she's sorry for one thing, but not the other. Right. It's a power play, which irritates me to no end. I don't like people like that. So I'm not, uh, still not a Sabine fan, honestly, um, just because of the treatment. I feel like there's a lack of respect there. I mean, when, when, when I you deal with a child. When I apologized to her and, and was refused an apology back, that's kind of a slap in the face. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. Oh. Again, if it's there, fine. If it isn't, fine too. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. <coughs> uh, six o'clock. What do you think? Yeah, we could end it off right here. Okay. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was pretty entertaining. I'm a little bit drunk. <laughs> Well, this is another episode of the Zooming Who's podcast, and once again, I'm your host, Dustin Oski. I'm Kurt Ansarpus, and I'm drunk. And I'm drunk, too. <laughs> we'll catch you next time.